You might be a ricer and not even know it. Some say it means that you spend more money trying to look fast than actually being fast. And it's not a name that you wanna be associated with. So how can you tell if you're actually a ricer? Well, first, ricers don't hit the subscribe button or turn on that notification bell. So do that and you're pretty much cured. But keep watching because here are eight signs that you might be a ricer. Are you ready? Well, buckle up, let's go. Well, this is potentially the most obvious calling card of a certified ricer. You hear an absurdly loud exhaust ripping down the road and you break your neck expecting to see something sick? Yeah, that ain't no Porsche or Ferrari. It's just a total ricer in a ratty Civic with a sawed off exhaust doing around 50 miles per hour, if that. Probably more like 50 kilometers an hour. And those super loud exhausts are the sonic embodiment of ricer culture. They're just straight up pathetic and they're just desperate to grab pretty much anyone's attention. I like attention, but not that kind of attention because it's the wrong attention. And the guys that usually drive these cars with these exhausts think that everybody on the sidewalk is just thinking to themselves that you're driving something special. But in reality, it's just extremely annoying and it gives me a migraine. If you're a ricer, you don't really care about that, do you? It's all about getting that super -de duper annoying sound that drives your neighbors absolutely crazy. So if your car is louder than it is fast, you may be a ricer. And one way to make sure that you aren't a ricer is go snag an ideal tee or hat up here, slap one of those on and it will guarantee give you five more horsepower and make your car just a little bit more ideal. And I'm pretty sure everyone's had an experience at least once in their life on the road where they shared it with a ricer. And it probably isn't a pleasant memory because ricers tend to drive like they're on the set of Fast and Furious all of the time. Which if you wanna know how much all those cars are worth on the Fast and Furious, well, we made an ideal video about that too. But these ricers are driving like this without the actually cool cars and they don't have the skills to perform the insane stunts in the movie. Lots of honking, not double clutching like you should, weaving through the traffic without the slightest regard to their own safety or anyone else's. And the one that I really like is when ricers speed past way faster cars. And it's like they're just trying to prove that their econo box is way more badass than that three series and that they could just blow them out of the water by just tapping on that gas. Well, the one thing with the econo box is at least they don't have to check for blinker fluid, right? But this is where ricers become more than just an annoyance for those of us who appreciate the art of the car. Because when you have people on the road that are constantly worried about proving that they're top dog, obviously those people are gonna be less concerned with the actual rules of the road and keeping everybody safe. So if you owned out some tricked out hoopty, just accept the fact that you aren't driving a Ferrari. And don't try to flex your unimpressive horsepower and put everybody in danger. It's just not worth it. Now, the best way to spot a ricer is obviously the car. But did you know that if you're really good at it, you can spot them by just looking at what they're wearing? Yeah, you may not know much about this culture, but the flashiness extends well past the car into the clothes as well. For instance, if you see a riced out car pull up next to you at a Chipotle parking lot, and it's got some flashy two-tone on it, the driver is probably matching their car, which you should never do. The taste police will arrest you. <laughs> And if a ricer isn't matching their vehicle with the clothes and the color, they're probably wearing clothes from companies like Affliction or Ed Hardy. Or they may just be wearing a straight up racing jacket. But one thing for sure, no matter what they're wearing, they're vented. Yes, a common stylistic choice of most ricers on pretty much any and every car is the amount of vents that are on display. Now, I'm with you. On the Mark V Supra, they had way too many fake vents, but I think they were just trying to follow what they thought was trendy. Because normally, vents are put on cars because they make the car either more aerodynamic or they force air into the components like brakes or the engine. But if you have vents on your car that are either unnecessary or just straight up fake, you should seriously take a look in the mirror and go, what the hell are you doing? Seriously, people pay money to get vents installed on their car and they actually don't even do anything. In fact, they probably have the reverse effect, kind of like those big spoilers. Ooh, that might be coming up in a minute. And regardless, fake vents are just a massive waste of money because any vent that you add on some Toyota Corolla or any car like it is completely unnecessary. And the engine does not need any more additional airflow. You just wanna look like you have a turbocharged V8 under the hood, and in reality, you have less than 100 horsepower and a hunk of crap. And really, you're not fooling 
anybody. And you know all those interior features that come in nice cars? Well, if you're a normal person, it probably wouldn't even cross your mind to strip them out, right? But if you have an uncontrollable urge to strip your interior down to its bare bones so that you can get that racing look, then you might be a ricer. In race cars, the lack of interior parts serves a real purpose, namely to reduce the weight of the vehicle so it can move quicker. But if you're rolling around in a Dodge Neon, there's no real reason to rip out the back seats or your passenger seat. Where's your friend gonna sit? And yeah, racing seats might look cool, but if your car is not built for power or speed, which is pretty much 99.9% .9 of all riced up cars, those racing seats just kind of look silly and they're uncomfortable. And I know we all have fantasies about hitting apexes at the Monaco Grand Prix, but save the stripped interiors for real race cars and keep the interior in your Honda Civic. No matter how much weight you're taking off that thing, it's still not gonna be fast. Now, racing wings aren't always a bad thing. And I don't mean to say that you should never, ever, ever put racing wings on your car, but ricers have taken this mod to a completely unnecessary level. Yeah, like, like way up there. When you put wings on that rival a Boeing 747 on your Subaru Impreza, then I think you've taken it one or two or 10 steps too far. And if you're thinking, no, no, the bigger the wing, the better, well then you might just be a ricer. I say a good rule of thumb is that if you're driving a street vehicle, your big wing should not be taller than the top of your car. If your car looks like it's ready to zoom zoom down the runway and just take flight, then you've probably gone just a wee bit too overboard. Wings first and foremost, are there to increase downforce so that race cars moving at high rates of speed don't lose stability and fly off the track. But if you're driving your car at a max speed of 65 miles per hour in the left lane, hashtag slow Prius, your racing wing is uh, useless, except as a table for food. Let's not forget that. Don't eat inside your car, kids. Use your big wing. And another telltale sign of a ricer is the classic sticker bombing of, well, pretty much any and every panel, which let's be honest, has never really ever looked good, like ever. And maybe one, two or three stickers on the back window are all right for your whip, but when you start covering every inch of your car, especially when you slap them on top of those cheap body parts that you bought for your car, then you may have to consider whether or not you're a real ricer. Typically stickers is kind of rice, except if you get yourself an ideal sticker, then it's not at all. So if you're gonna do it, well, either hit the rear window or maybe one or two on the bumper, but no more than a couple. And stickers on your hood is never a good thing. And basically to summarize what the ricer lifestyle is all about, it's sort of a call for attention or help. You may want to impress people by your car with all your sweet mods. So you take it to 11 and you make your weak street car look like a super powerful racing machine. But real racing rigs doesn't need to be over flashy or over the top or loud. They just speak for themselves with their incredible performance and style. I mean, you're never going to see someone slapping a bunch of stickers on their overly large racing wing on their Ferrari Spider. I mean, everything can happen. But if someone has done that, they deserve jail time. The point is that ricing, it's a bit of a pissing contest in which there really is no winner. And guys, I feel like I just had to get that off my chest. And like I said, this video was made for fun because, well, you gotta have fun every once in a while, right? And the best part is that if you have any ricer things on your car, well, you can take it back to stock and get rid of the stigma. And if you have any friends that need to see this video and need a good laugh, well then share this video with them. And if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger, this is Ideal. Please subscribe, turn on that notification bell. And you subscribers are really what make this channel grow and make all of us here at Ideal have our dream job. So thank you for watching and keep living the Ideal lifestyle.